Well, the holidays are wonderful, wonderful and merry, right? Well, right up until the family conflict begins. <laughs> and here to help us solve this year's drama, which I say save that drama for your yeah. mama, <laughs> is Dr. Nina Rios Doria yes. here to give us some tips, right? Because it always happens around the holidays. It Why? does. And your mama is probably the drama. Yeah, yeah probably. She's usually the one. Right? You should, you know what? And and conflict's going to happen when it comes to getting a lot of families together. One of the things I have to say, we can try to work on preventing it a little bit. And I had 18 in my office the other day, and she was dreading going to her dad's and her stepmom's. And so we talked about, you know, what are you going to do if this happens? Mm -hmm. Like, if, the, if that person triggers you, what are you going to do? So I think it's really important with families that you kind of have a plan B in place if you find yourself getting a little excited and anxious. What about know? talking to one of your family members beforehand? You know, yeah. kind of trying to squash things before you even come together. And I think that's good if you can have a moment to kind of set aside before the event starts. And you know what, one thing I want to talk about is how do you do that when you when you meet with somebody that you've already been in a lot of conflict with? Mm -hmm. How do you get to that peaceful place so that you can have a good a good family, you know, uh, holiday? Mm -hmm. One of the, uh, an author called The Anatomy of Peace by James Farrell, he talks about this pyramid. And one thing he asked everybody, and I'm gonna ask the viewers too, do you have a heart of peace or a heart of war? Because if you live in a state where you always want to be justified and right, then you're going to have that heart of war and you're never going to really be able to have that relationship or sit down with that person and connect with them, right? So I think recognizing, you know what, do I always want to be right? Do I always want to be justified? Because if that's the case, you probably have a heart of war and you, you need to work and shift that to a heart of peace. Now, the holidays, people are drinking wine, and anytime yeah. alcohol gets involved, <laughs> all these rules go out the window, right? Yeah. So practically, what can you do? Because there's, you know, if you know there's going to be conflict, what are some practical things you can do? Well, practical things, like I said, if you start feeling a little heated or excited, walk away and have plan B. Um, when I go back and talked about um, having that, trying to get in that peaceful place, it's not about trying to change the person. It's about trying to invite them to change. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that is to try to put them in a high regard, try to understand and see their point of view. Do you know what I'm saying? When when someone's talking to you, if you really feel, if you're in conflict, if you really feel heard and understood, you're going to feel a connection and a relationship with them. And then you might be okay and be willing to receive something that you're going to say to them that's maybe negative. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It t I think it takes a, a really emotionally mature person to do that, though, to step, a, like, take a breath. Yes. And, and, and really step back and, and be like that. And it's hard to do. And you know what, Lisa, you, you know, we were talking earlier about, you know, some of us may just be the person with the, in relationships that have that kind of peaceful heart. And maybe that's, you're the person that's gonna be the change agent for the other person. Mm -hmm. Because if you can, this holiday, if you can have a heart of peace, if you can be, try to be in a good centered place where you're trying to hold that person in high regard, where you're trying to understand them and try to build on that relationship. What because, if you hate them though? It's really that's hard, hard to feel that's that way if you hate them. Yeah. After you have a couple glasses of wine, <laughs> right. that's when all heck breaks loose, right? Yeah, and then the, I guess that's a good point because the question is, do you really want to have a close relationship with them? Do you want to have a peaceful feeling when you're around them? Or do you just want to kind of accept the way it is and kind of step away and don't involve yourself with them? And, reconnect with other people that you have a better relationship with. And just with. get through the holiday And get through it. Maybe it's not needed to be heavy and, and establish that great relationship, but step back. Mm -hmm. and at some point, you have to make it peaceful for everybody else that's sitting around the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, because you, the stress causes everybody else to be on edge. Yes, it does. So, you know, what can you do to calm everybody down, mm -hmm. right? And so it's just, it's, it's going back to what I was saying, just trying to connect with everybody, make everyone feel like they, um, they're validated and understood, even though you may not agree with it all the time. But the more you put that person in a place where they feel heard, the more they might listen and receive and calm down. But when it comes to alcohol and drinking, that does change the game. Well, and my mom always said, you never talk about religion and politics and what happens around the Christmas dinner table. <laughs> Everyone's talking about religion and politics and the wine is flowing. So what do you do when you start sensing that tension building up? It's not something that's been going on before. It's starting to build up at the time. Yeah, and I think setting some boundaries ahead of time. Like, are any of you hosting this? this Christmas or anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, and it's it's setting the tone. It's setting boundaries. You know what? When you when you see some someone get a little elevated and excited, it's it's setting boundaries. It's like you know what? This is a time where we're going to all enjoy each other. Let's and then switch yeah. subjects. But it's setting boundaries and having some structure so you don't allow those people to get out of hand with you. You definitely Pour the wine and, and just turn have on wine. the karaoke machine. <laughs> That's what we do. Turn on the wine music. and karaoke. And yeah, wine. those always go great together and calm everything down. Great, great tips. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to try them. I know. <laughs> right. Yeah, they go. 